Hi everyone, my name is PK and here I have Luciana Bucata, who is a client of the Profit Investment Accelerator, but the real reason that uh, she's volunteered and I'm very grateful that, that we're having this chat is because she's been on a long property journey ever since she migrated uh, to Australia from Brazil. You know, she's made a lot of you could say, quote unquote, mistakes. She's made a lot of good decisions. Some of the mistakes have been buying house and land packages and almost being sucked into like investor groups where they sell you brand new stock. But as a new immigrant or a new investor, you don't necessarily know. But she's also done a lot of great things um, it, pre and post doing the course. And now she's really looking to, to take her property investing to the next level. So in the next sort of 20 minutes, we'll go through her journey. You guys will learn so much about what not to do, especially as novice property investors, and also a lot about what to do. This will be, I think, a really interesting episode because so many people get sucked in to like Facebook ads and to like what's easy when it comes to property investing, but what's easy is not normally as it, it's too good to be true. Like it is not normally how it appears. So without further ado, uh, Luciana, thank you so much for um, for making time. Thank you for having me, PK. Welcome to the Oz Property Investment Mastery Podcast. My name is PK and I help busy people build passive income by buying top 5% growth and cash flow property and build a portfolio using data without wasting months doing research, spending weekends at inspection or catching flights or dropping ten dollars to $20,000 on buyer's agents every single time. So if you're confused, lack confidence and just overwhelmed with all the information and marketing misinformation available online and don't know where to start, then this show is for you. Let's start from the start. Um, I know we've already been talking, but you you came from Brazil and, you know, you and, and your partner, how did you start sort of getting onto the property ladder in Australia? Sure. Yeah, we migrated. I migrated a little bit before him. He was my boyfriend back then. Okay. And the plan was always to go back. 2004. And what is it? Nearly 20 years. We're still here. <laughs> and we will stay. Australia is home now. So yeah, um, back in Brazil, we did have, uh, we own our house there, but, but in Brazil, um, because of this, the safety issue, apartments and, and closed condominiums are, are the way to go. And my parents um, never thought about investing in, in, in the real estate space. And it was really here in Australia that we um, ended up um, looking into it. And um, and turns out that I'm passionate about it. <laughs> uh, so we migrated in 2004, but we bought, uh, we moved, we lived in Sydney for some time and then uh, migrated, uh, moved to Adelaide in 2007. And in 2009, that was when we bought our first property. Um, you might remember that was after the global financial crisis. So there was quite a lot of incentive, government incentives for, for the, the building industry, the construction industry. So there was uh, um, stamp duty exemptions. There were first time home buyer grants and, and all sorts. So we, we ended up in 2009, we ended up buying a house and land package. And I remember clearly the sales pitch that we heard was that well, when you buy a house and land package, you save on stamp duty because you, 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 you buy a block of land, so you don't need to pay stamp duty on the house. You right. only pay stamp duty on the land, which was true. Yeah. Um, but what happened was um, it's very rare that a, a construction or a, a building um, ended up being finished on, on time. So it was extended, there was extended waiting there. And yeah. while we were waiting, we were paying rent and we right. were paying mortgage. Right. So we ended up saving, I can't remember, I think it was about 12 grand on stamp duty back then. Mm -hmm. And I, I did I, I did a spreadsheet, I should have um, refreshed my memory before talking to you, but I think we ended up paying 14,000. We saved 12, 12 grand on stamp duty, but then we pay 14 grand on, um, extra mortgage payments and 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 rent right um mm, that was a bit of a trap um we got about 30 or 35 grand on um a first time home buyer um grant 
But um, when we look at it, um, really, <laughs> the developer, whoever sold us the property, um, had a good bite uh, on that uh, um, incentive that we got. Um, uh, I remember we paid 380 for this um, housing and package. And I think it was by the time we, we uh, did some uh, additions to it, we put um, air conditioner, we did landscaping, we did bits and pieces. And when we would get to the bank and, and get a valuation, it was still below the price. And we even took to the market once, uh, but we ended up not selling it because we didn't want to sell at a loss. So mm -hmm. really we, we pay an overpriced, um, um, we bought an overpriced property. So, so what was it? Because I know that a lot of people who are new to Australia, um, there's this kind of natural inclination to buy a house and land package, perhaps because it's like new. I, I don't know. Some cultures, they like new things. I mean, who doesn't like a new thing, right? Um, it's new. It's clean. It's yours. Um, why, did, why were you sort of attracted to a house and land package versus buying like, let's say, an established house and, and doing it up? Was there, yeah, what was your thought process? Um, the first time by a grant was something that caught our, our attention. We did okay. have a bit of a deposit, which um, we could have gone and, and bought a, an established established house, a home. Um, but I think the 30 grand was something that caught our attention. The fact that we would save on stamp duty um, also caught our attention. I, I didn't like the building process, the waiting, the stress, the issues that we have, even the selection part. Some, some ladies and some guys, they like it, but I, it wasn't me. I didn't like spending yeah. my weekends going around and choos choosing tiles and, <laughs> and, yeah. and, and, and fixtures. I didn't really like that. Um, but yeah, it was mainly the financial incentive. But it didn't take me a long time to realize that um, it was really, um, it, it was back then seemed the best option but it wasn't really the the best option and i know like we were saying before for some people um, arriving here with not a huge deposit it might be an option um and i'm not saying probably the terrible option and please don't do it mm -hmm. it, it might be an option for some but as long as um you know you made an informed decision um, um, I, I don't really regret buying this property because we managed to get a, a equity out of it five times. But it, but if I knew what I know now, I probably would have got for would have gone for an established home. Right, right. Yeah, yeah I mean, there's pros and cons to to everything. And I think if we fast forward to 2023, those building timelines that you're referring to. And the maybe headache and complication or stress is like, you know, expounded or it's like exaggerated, probably like fivefold or sixfold. All these builders are going bust, timelines are, are extending, the budgets are, are not really sticking to budget. There's no fixed price contracts anymore. So it's like, I know that a lot of people that we're watching, they're new on Australian shores and they're like, oh, here's like a perfect house. On the page, it looks great, right? On the picture, it looks great. Yeah. But it's going to take a long time to happen, a lot of stress to happen. And with the land to asset ratio being low, perhaps it's not going to be the best decision. But like you said, you don't regret it because property is like a very forgiving asset class, at least in Australia. Over the long mm -hmm. term, you've taken equity out multiple times. So, so that's all credit for you actually doing something rather than nothing. Um, yeah. And just to kind of paint a picture, like if you don't mind sharing, what do you do professionally or what did you do back then or, or your partner just to sort of understand? Yeah, my partner, he's a vet. Back then, he was still going through his exams to get his uh, degree valid here. So he was working as a vet nurse. Now he's got his own business. Um, and I work uh, for the government here. I am a research officer. Uh, I do research on freshwater fish ecology. Oh, yeah. wow. okay. Mm. Very interesting. But the, interesting. the passion is <laughs> the passion is in the real estate space. <laughs> sure, sure. sure. Um, well, it's research, right? Research here, research yes. there. It's that sort of analytical thinking and mindset and approach that is very transferable. So you had that um, first house. Uh, what did you do next? 
uh, before we move on, can I just mention something, PK? Yeah, go for we it. We did have a deposit, and one of the reasons why we went for the first time home, uh, home buyer grant was so we would avoid pay LMI. Um, and, and now, knowing what I know, now I would look back and I would say, you know, wow, we saved a few thousands, mm -hmm. but uh, in the long run, you know, we should have made a lot more money, you know, so it's really false economy, you know, that idea of avoiding paying LMR. Obviously, if we can, you know, save that, it's it's a good thing to do because we are not paying uh, insurance for the bank to cover the bank, not to cover ourselves, um, but uh, not to the price of getting um, a less ideal investment. Right, right. So, yeah, yeah, there was a question posted on the Facebook group just this morning. Someone asked, it was a good question. They said, should I buy one property without paying lender's mortgage insurance, you know, paying 20, 30% deposit, or should I get two properties paying lender's mortgage insurance? And, you know, and, and for me, it was like, as long as you can afford the cash flow of, you know, paying, let's say a 10% deposit, 12% deposit, you know, two properties is better than one because you have two properties growing so long as you know what you're doing and you're buying in the right areas. But like you said, LMI is your friend and it actually gets, as you know, capitalized into the loan amount. It's not like extra cash you need to pay. And it's also deductible over five years from a, um, you know, from a tax deduction perspective. So, I mean, people should think about it. There's pros and cons, but if you're starting your portfolio and you know you want to be a property investor, I don't know if, if at this point you knew you wanted to be a property investor, but if you do know, then then go for LMI. <laughs> That's right. And for medical professionals, we found out later as well when we went and bought our second property, medical professionals, they can have, um, uh, they don't need to, um, to pay 20% to avoid LMI. Yeah. Uh, some banks, they do 10%. Yeah. So it's... Um, yeah, it's another perk as well. Do, do vets do vets qualify for that? Are yeah. They, cool. Yeah. 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 So when we bought our second property, yeah. um, we we didn't have or we had nothing, <laughs> but we fell in love for, for the property and we yeah. um, ended up using equity from this house and borrow money from 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 family and and we yeah we avoid play, paying LMI um, because he was already a fully qualified vet and then. Nice. Banks would lend us money uh, without charging LMI up to 90%. Nice, yeah. nice. So the second property you bought um, with the help of equity and you bought that also in Adelaide um, in Seton, wasn't it? Like a big, big piece of land? Yes, uh, it's a 920 square meter um, land, block of land. And it had a house that was built in, in the mid 60s, mm -hmm. but was renovated by an Italian couple in uh, mid 90s. Okay. So big, as you know, knowing Italia's big, big kitchen, lounge, <laughs> big kitchen, <laughs> big party area, big, uh, big uh, cooking top. You know, they were just yeah. a couple and they, they had five burners. <laughs> yeah, big stainless steel one. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and, and I found it by accident. I was looking for a place for my mom um, uh -huh. to buy, and I entered this house. Um, the agent, uh, there was no one there. The agent was on the phone. Did everything to keep me there and keep me interested. Even offered to to sell the the first house, the one that I bought as a, we bought it as a land um, house and land package. Um, and yeah, he did everything to 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 help us to get that house, and 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 we did, and it was it was a great investment. It was it was an accident, but it was a great investment. Um, my husband um, agreed to that purchase even with, with without seeing the house. He just saw the size of the block and he said, yep, let's go for it. Yeah. Then that, that was in what year? That was in 2012. The first one was in 2009, mm -hmm. um, finished building in mid-2010. Mm -hmm. And then this one we bought in 2012. 2012. Awesome. Yeah. Coincidentally, every time we had a child, we bought a property. <laughs> I don't know how the banks like that. <laughs> Not very much. <laughs> so, so we bought uh, before I went part time. Uh, before we add another dependent on on our uh -huh. account. <laughs> uh -huh. So, did yeah. you move into that, or was that always an investment property? Now we lived there for nearly ten years. Oh wow. Um, yeah, and we renovated it. Uh, we we loved, and we thought our 
Next properties would be investment properties, uh, and that one will be the one that we would live for the rest of our lives. But nothing, never say never, right? Yeah. Um, so we lived there for 10 years. Um, but during COVID, or well, before that, we bought, um, I was pregnant with our third child, and um, um, someone came to us and, and offered um, a nice unit. Mm -hmm. uh, in a boutique apartment in a new state, um, not far from town, near supermarkets, cafe, express line to town, and and no need to pay any deposit. So we got equity again from that house, the first one. Um, got equity again and bought that um, unit. Um, big lesson learned there uh, for us. Um, my partner was, my husband was completely against it. Okay. And I was the one who pushed for it. I said, oh, we have nothing to lose, you know. We don't need to pay deposit, you know. Yeah. Uh, there was a year of um, um, guaranteed rent as well. So we have nothing to use. Let's go for it. Yeah. And um, we had it for about seven years. Was was um, an area where there was a jockey, jockey club. So there was vast um, area. And guess what happened as well as our unit, you know, many townhouses, all the apartments. Um, we even bought with a view to the hills and didn't take long for another apartment to be built there. Okay. <laughs> so seven years forward, um, um, we sold the, the apartment for 20% more than what we paid for with the help of, help of COVID. Oh, if it wasn't for COVID, that includes the COVID boom. That includes the COVID boom. Right. So, so you know how bad it was. <laughs> right, right, right. Does, um, your, does your husband always kind of say you should have should have listened to me on that one? Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> and, and a big lesson learned is we decided that when we are not both on the same page, we are not doing business. You know, mm. if it's to buy a, a house or or uh, or a car or even to sell something, if we're not both on the same page, we probably should sit on it for a bit and not just jump right, to conclusions right. and 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 yeah and ahead of us ourselves good relationship advice i'd say for most people <laughs> <laughs> i would like to think so <laughs> nice man um, nice okay so there was i mean there was a kind of lesson learned with the house and land package and the seat in 900 square meters you know you kicked that one out of the park and you enjoyed it you, you know your kids grew up and that sounds like a, a terrific decision the apartment you know and the jockey club perhaps not so much and once again i would say that's like a common if I can, you know, be audacious enough to say common mistake that people make is, you know, they buy these apartments because what can go wrong? Like they don't, they don't need any deposit, you know, it can only go up, right? And and then we'll settle it and happy days, but it doesn't always work out like that because there's a hundred, 200, 300 new apartments, townhouses that can always go up. So uh, it sounds like you've, you've kind of gone through the ordeal of fire and, and learned the lessons a little bit of, of the hard way, but nonetheless, the lessons have been learned. Um, and then there was one more lesson left to be learned. What did you do next? <laughs> <laughs> yes, there was. So that the apartment we bought in 2017, uh -huh. and and we had you know our third child, and um, and we did nothing in the real estate space for a few years. Uh -huh. But then in 2020, I started getting itchy, getting itchy again. Um, but my my partner, my husband, pulled me back and said, "Hang on, and before we make another big purchase, let's go and travel Australia." So we bought a camper trailer instead of buying a house. Uh -huh. We bought a camper trailer. We bought a, a, a bigger car. And that was, we left in June 2021, right in the middle of COVID still. So okay. instead of going to the eastern states, we went up through the middle of Australia. And then we came down the WA coast. Oh, so and you like was, escaped the lockdowns by just going through around Australia? Yeah, we had a couple of lockdowns here, but it was only a couple of weeks. Right. It was quite enjoyable, let's put it this way, even okay. the lockdowns that we have here. And yes, we we had uh, we escape um, most of uh, issues uh, during COVID, but um, when there was a time that there was there were a few cases in 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 the NT, and then WA closed the border to the, yes. the people coming from the NT. Yes. We were there. We had to sleep by the border one night. Oh, okay. and then we managed to find accommodation. We have to isolate. We had to be in lockdown. 
in a beautiful place called Kananara by the Kananara Lake. So that was that was a pretty good lockdown. Nice, nice. That's that's you and your husband and and three kids, right? Three kids. That's right. What an experience. And and then, uh, sorry, what was the question? I was just saying that would have been a great experience. It was a very good experience. So when we came down, uh, even during the process, we start looking into getting our kids um, to um, Waldorf Steiner School. Mm -hmm. And and because of COVID, we managed to secure a spot for all three of them, which was uh, something important to us. We wouldn't like to remove our kids from their friendship friendship group and from the A school and then not letting them go to the school that we were aiming for while they were seeing their brothers and sisters doing that. Right. So all three of them got into the school and we had to move out of our home that we thought we would live forever. Okay. We planted fruit trees there and I thought my, you know, our grandkids would climb those fruit trees. So that's the yeah. hardest thing, you know, like when you have a garden like we have a garden here as well. When you have a garden that you've nurtured and you've cherished and you've you've actually sowed the seeds, you can never sell that house. I don't care. <laughs> you know, I don't care about money. If if I planted that like pomegranate tree or that you know guava tree, I'm never leaving. <laughs> oh, guava! Yeah. You know guava. Yeah, because you don't uh, get a guava so easily in Australia, so we had to uh, we have to plant our own guava tree. <laughs> That's right. So that that's the thing. It's because it's a big block. People say, "Oh, you can build three or four houses here." And I always yeah. say, "No, no. I want to see my grandkids yeah. climb the, the fruit trees that we planted." So yeah, in um, going back, uh, so the kids got into when we came back from the trip. We had six weeks in that house. Um, we didn't um, unpack. We basically kept everything that were, were in boxes and um, just pack what were in boxes and, and got ready to move to another beautiful place in Adelaide called Ojinga Beach, which is uh, south of Adelaide near yeah. McLaren Vale. If, yeah, if you know really McLaren nice place, place. yeah. Yeah, um, so we moved there and we were renting for some time. But during that time, we were thinking, do, do we rent vest? Do we buy something um, for us to live? Or do we um, buy an investment property? So that's, that's when... Um, um, that's when we almost made, made our fourth mistake. Mm -hmm. um, um, I joined a, um, an investment property group and that was a bit of education, uh, but was I think the focus was um, buying, finding properties for the members of this group. And, um, and for some time while we were sorting out our finances, because um, my husband is self-employed and being away for six months didn't help or nearly six yeah. months didn't help so we, while we were sorting the finances I was going through the the educational part of the um, of the membership or the group I should say um, and then when the the time came that um, there was a property found or kept for us um, ended up being a townhouse um, that one wasn't a housing land was already completely finished mm -hmm. um uh, but it was in a small block of land townhouse in a group from memory i think it was about in a group of 48 right then then there was that deja vu moment uh, hang on a minute it seems like we're getting ourselves into the same situation that we did when we bought the unit you know yeah. Um, these um, the, the, they talk about the demand and supply ratio, but where is where is the shortage here? We're talking about forty eight uh, townhouses. So uh, in an area in in Queensland, which you, you're very familiar, uh, PK in, in Ipswich. Mm -hmm. So um, um, husband wasn't on board, um, and so I said, okay, I'll dig out a little bit more. I'll do my research and the price that. Um, we were asked for that townhouse was the same price of a four or five, five bedroom house in Ipswich in the same area. Wow. So yeah, we, we had to say a big no. And um, around that time, a good friend of mine who I met when I first arrived in Australia, she sent me one of your videos. And then I clearly remember you saying, no one cares more about your money than you do. And that was um, really a wake-up call for me. I said, I've got to learn how to do it myself because 
whoever is selling me something, they're selling us something. They've got their own agenda. So that's how I, I joined. It took me a, a good couple of months, <laughs> uh, but my husband is very supportive and he said, yep, if you want to learn this, let's do it. I'm sure we'll benefit from it. Mm-hmm. So I, um, I joined your course um, in December last year. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember talking to Samia um, and, and ever since I've been restructuring our portfolio. So I, we sold the unit Mm-hmm. Um, and we ended up buying our our home somewhere mm-hmm. that we are living. Um, I'm sure it will be a, a great investment in the future because it's in Odinga. It's yeah. far enough from Adelaide that people will go and spend the weekend. Um, and yeah, so it, it is a place that we are calling home, but uh, we've got itchy feet. We don't know how long <laughs> we will stay there. And, and if we don't stay there, uh, will be a great investment. Um, will be a great investment. So I use the, the system that you teach um, to buy our principal place of residence as well. Right. And Aldinga Beach has always been, I mean, not that I've been in the property game for 30, 40 years, but in Adelaide, Aldinga Beach has always been a nice area. Um, for the locals to have like a holiday home or actually to live. And I think in the last five years, maybe seven, eight years, it's becoming more and more popular, even with people outside of Adelaide. They're, you know, they're cluing on that there's actually not so far from Adelaide proper, like the CBD, and there's the beach there, and there's the great lifestyle, the coffee shops, etc. So, I mean, the yield from an investment perspective, if you said, oh, PK, I had 500K, 600K to spend, I probably wouldn't say, like, go buy there. But from a PPR perspective, like, you know, it's hard to beat a, a location like that with the growth drivers if you don't care about the cash flow so much because you're living there. So that's, I, I, I want to ask you um, in a second, like how you built trust to do my course because you had done this other course, right? I, I want to ask you that, but I just want to make this statement um, as well because I feel that a lot of people like you, and, and we get these questions like every single day in the Facebook group, guys, what do you think about this company? What do you think about that company? What do you think about this company? And they all, I won't use their names because that's not the right thing to do, but really there are thousands of companies in Australia and they run really well as <laughs> polished Facebook ads and YouTube ads. And really all of them, 99% of them, they sell you something brand new, whether it's an apartment or a condominium, like a townhouse that you're referring to an Ipswich or a house and land package. And the reason they sell you that is because they get 30 to $40,000 from a developer to sell you that, okay? And as a new migrant, you know, you kind of, I mean, as a new migrant, you're kind of finding your way, not that you are new, but at this time, but you're kind of finding your way through Australian real estate and you don't understand how the inner workings and and sort of the underbelly of Australian real estate works. But it's, it's kind of really sad because like you said, you're buying a townhouse in Ipswich for the same price as a normal house with much more land. And so that's just like a terrible investment, but they front load their programs with a course, right? And the course, I mean, not that I've done any of these courses, presumably teach you stuff that's very logical and kind of points you in the direction to what they're doing for you. So you're by the time finish the course, you're like, oh yeah, this is a great idea. Let let me do this. So I, I guess I just wanted to, to put that out there for everyone as a warning. Anyone who's trying to sell you a brand new Um, house and land package apartment townhouse I think you should run or if not run at least briskly walk away while considering your your options nothing wrong with buying something new but do it yourself buy a piece of land and build on it yourself if you really want to the question coming back to where I was referring to how did you build trust or perhaps your husband because now you've kind of been burnt a few times already how did you build trust in doing another course and a much more expensive course perhaps that that is mine um by then PK, your course obviously it was a big chunk of money coming out of our bank account but it's this similar to the lmi you know it is something that in the long run it was the best decision that we made you know we didn't want to save up the the money for your course and then keep making mistakes yes. that was the first point 
Um, I followed you uh, for a couple of months because I really need to be able to, one, trust you and to convince my partner because otherwise by then we had already agreed that if we were on the same page, I, you know, we wouldn't make it. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I had to, to convince him. So I followed you and some of the stuff that you teach um, helped me understanding why the mistakes I made were mistakes. So, for instance, the unit, when you talk about renters and you have that threshold, you don't want many, you know, I don't know if I should mention the percentage that we use as a criteria, but, you know, we don't want a suburb with um, many uh, investment properties and many renters because that's competition, right? So mm -hmm. my, the what I mentioned that there was one year guarantee for six months. There were so many, so much stock in the market for six months. Our unit was vacant. You know, we were obviously getting the rent from the company, mm -hmm. but after one year, you know, that was on us. Yeah. So, so we have made mistakes. And when I start going through some of your contents that made completely sense, why, why you were teaching it, because we had experienced it, mm. you know, mm. so that helped a lot getting, uh, getting trust in you and also getting my husband <laughs> to trust me <laughs> into doing, enrolling uh, in, into your course. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, you know, when does it you answer just, your question? No, it does. Like when you, yeah. when you've been through those issues and troubles and then when someone is like, you shouldn't do these particular things, you're like, oh, damn it. That's the exact things that I've done. It kind of is like, it just clicks into gear, like a jigsaw puzzle. You just, you just connect. Any, anyway, I don't, I don't wish that you had gone through that, but at least um, it served a purpose, and 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 in that way, it's good. And and I I want to talk about now, if if you want, you obviously are restructuring your portfolio, and I think you're looking to buy in your SMSF, and 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 we can talk about that. But I just want to commend you as well and congratulate you because I think you've also bought. Is it multiple properties for your friends or family? One of the two. Yeah, I've I've helped uh, friends and family. Uh, in fact, the house where I am now, my brother's house, he was in Sydney, so I was the one who did the inspections and help. And people come for advice. You know, I have physically helped some people, but I also helped people just by talking to them. Right. Um, and because we've done, um, we are not the only Brazilians here in Adelaide who have, have done it, mm -hmm. but uh, because we've done what some people would like to do, you know, build their portfolio, usually right. people come and, and, and talk to us. Right. Mm. right. So, that, I mean, that that gives me a lot of satisfaction knowing that, you know, someone who I've helped in some small way is kind of using those skills and experience and and knowledge, because knowledge is truly power to kind of help other people, whether it's directly or, or indirectly. Is the Brazilian, I don't know so much about like the Brazilian culture, but like in in Australia, as you know, everyone loves property. Is it like that in Brazil? Does everyone want to be a property investor or is it when they come to Australia, then they get the property bug? Uh, a bit of both. Um, there are people, not in our family, but there are uh, people with many properties in Brazil. Uh, and obviously, those are the ones who come here and they want to hit the ground running. They yeah. really want to get into the, to the property space as soon as possible. But there are people like us, like myself and my husband, we decide to become property investors here in sure. Australia. Because it's do. such a good market. You know, we have so many benefits uh -huh. um really once we get our head around it's it's not a hard game it's not difficult to make right mm. right and so what's what's kind of next for you in terms of your own uh property investing um we are looking to buy in the smfs s s m s f yep <laughs> because <laughs> i got that right because we maxed out our borrowing capacity, <laughs> uh -huh. we want to keep buying um, probably in Queensland, regional Queensland. Um, and um, but yeah, we need to to sort out um, yeah our our finances uh, first, um, and yeah, just keep moving moving forward. Just watching the equities on our investment properties um, increasing, and just keep moving forward as soon as possible. Amazing, amazing, and I know that you. You've said so many times now that you've kind of developed a, a real deep passion uh, for research. I mean, you're already a researcher, but in, in the real estate game, could could you kind of, may, I'm putting you on the spot here, none of this is kind of scripted, but could you give maybe 
three top tips or or from your own experience what's like two or three big lessons that you can give to someone who let's use the brazil example is like it's 2023 they've just arrived in australia from brazil in 2022 or 2023 they want to buy their first or second investment property what's a few like let's say you're having a chat with them over coffee what's a few pieces of advice that you can give them right um, first of all, I would say don't follow anyone's advice. Just do your homework. I like that. Because like I said before, uh, people have their own agenda, right? Um, the next one, you know, I think when we come from Brazil, we think we are going to buy our forever home house and not always we can buy our the, the, the house that we want to live for the rest of our lives. Mm -hmm. So it's probably better to buy something is small or old or you know th there are trade-offs to be made you know we won't buy the Taj Mahal next time we are buying a property here right mm -hmm. so it's better to get into the market rather than try to to find your perfect property because then we will just keep you out of the market for longer and it, the, the longer you are out of the market the harder it is to get into it um, and the next one is uh you ask for three, right? So I've given you two. If you want, yeah. <laughs> I've got one that I've been using a fair bit in this hot market. There is the cost of missing opportunities, right? Um, obviously, we don't want to jump and uh, on anything and just, you know, um, make um, bad purchases like like I did, mm -hmm. uh, bad deals. But um, sitting on our backside and do nothing is also there is also a cost associated to it so mm. people who are on the market for the last two or three years waiting for it to crash you know they are they, they are coping with a huge cost of missing out on opportunities of missing out of jumping um, and getting to the market right yeah that that's great advice and and i i especially loved your first piece of advice like don't take advice from anyone and that's kind of like ironic it's like well why am I listening to this in the first place but <laughs> oh, I think it's great advice because I mean take advice right but then filter it like be like okay what's this person trying to sell is it PK trying to sell a course is it a buyer's agent trying to sell their service is it some spruikers selling something else like we can learn lessons from everyone regardless of their agenda and then make your own investment thesis right like don't just copy my investment thesis blindfolded you know putting a blindfold on doesn't serve anyone because no one like you said before no one cares about you like ultimately no one cares about you as much as you do so you need to actually learn you need to actually figure it out and I think that unfortunately some people have to learn that the hard way and you know it's better to learn it than never learn it but if we can serve people by you know sharing these stories that you have and hopefully they don't have to learn it the hard way they can kind of be like all right yeah maybe house and land's not the best way maybe unit's not the best way maybe giving my money to someone who's going to buy me a brand new townhouse or something is not the best way at least think about it I think nothing can replace education nothing can replace you investing in yourself because I think you probably come to the same conclusion uh, Luciana and your husband right like the best investment is to <laughs> the best real estate is is you you have to invest in your own knowledge that's really the the prime real estate that we need to first get under control before we can go out and try and make a million dollars. But I really appreciate you you coming on. And yeah, there's something to be said. Um, yeah, there's something to be said about just like a real life story because it's, I can get a million clients, not a million, I can get hundreds of clients here to say, oh yeah, we achieved X, Y, Z and X, Y years and you know, it's all good. But these are the real stories. Uh, these are the real stories that I think people should know. So I really appreciate it. Was there anything lastly that you wanted to say? Well, I just want to say about the, the new houses and the housing land packages. It might be the only way someone with a small deposit will get into the market. It's fine as long as they are aware what they're getting into, you know, mm -hmm. and that they know that's not the best deal. But that's what, what's feasible, what's possible at that time. And um, and I also get that, uh, and I do have friends who don't don't have the time, the patience, or the passion that we do, and they are not going to educate themselves. So they will end up engaging with people, you know, either a, a investment group or or a buyers agent. So even if you even if someone decided that they don't want to educate themselves and they want to 
contract out someone else to find them property, make sure you do your homework as well because you want to engage with someone who is ethical and um, has your best interest in, in their heart, not, not um, a kickback from a developer or something like that. Yeah, no, well said. Ho- homework must be done this way or that way. Homework must be done. I know, I know right. you're super passionate in this sort of next chapter, Luciana, of, of being one of those ethical people. So, so that's fantastic. And obviously, I'll um, I'll I'll share this across all platforms. Also, in my Facebook group, and and I'll tag you. So, guys, if you want to reach out with Luciana and just pick her, I don't know if you want you want to do this or you want to pick her mind or just kind of you know have a conversation with her. She's a nice person as you can see she's got nothing like no agenda nothing to kind of like shove down your throat so yeah please please use that um, opportunity but thank you so much again Luciana and, and congratulations to obviously both you and your husband and you know it's it's nice that your three kids will will grow up and you know not have to struggle because of the hard work that their parents have put in thank you so much PK thanks for the opportunity it was nice talking to you and you and thank you everyone for for watching and and listening i really appreciate you thank you for being part of this community in the youtube client results playlist there's more than a hundred of these and i honestly like i always say don't care whether you do the course or not but go through them watch them listen to them absorb them because you'll learn so so very much okay there's no excuse for not being educated thank you so much hit the subscribe button hit the like button thank you again luciana thanks vk